Welcome to all the Gaming Memories video and today I'm turning my focus to the MSX and more specifically 10 exclusive MSX games I think are worth a play. Not necessarily the best ones but they're definitely worth a look. So my history of the MSX is relatively recent. I didn't play on one back in the 80s. I don't think I even saw one. I would have seen them in magazines, the odd advert or review of a game or something like that but I definitely don't remember seeing an MSX even though I was aware of it. It wasn't particularly popular in the UK I don't think and I perceived it as something at the time like the Dragon 32 or the Auric, basically one of the lesser 8-bit machines. And it wasn't until the mid 2000s when I got into retro gaming that I learned a little bit more about the system and found that it is quite an interesting system compared to most 8 bits of the era. It can sort of be conceived as an early prototype for the PC architecture in as much as lots of different companies were manufacturing MSX computers to the same standard. They all had Microsoft operating system as well so it does kind of seem like a similar concept to the later IBM PC incompatibles. So with my curiosity peaked, in around 2010 I bought myself an MSX off eBay. I got myself the Toshiba HX10 which I think was the most common MSX computer sold in the UK. I got a boxed one for about £25 at the time. I don't imagine you can get one for that price now. And I set about looking for games for the MSX that were somewhat different to the usual 8-bit games that I'd played on the likes of the Commodore 64 and BBC Micro. Now it's fair to say that the MSX games library in the UK was not particularly good. Most of the games were ports of Spectrum games and not necessarily very good ones. There were probably also some imports from places like Spain, the Netherlands and Japan where the MSX was more popular. But for the most part the UK games library is fairly forgettable from what I can make out. So my interest really is on games from other countries and most specifically Japan. All my games are cartridge games and most of them were only available in Japan although some were released in the UK and other territories. And it's fair to say that the real standout companies where MSX exclusive games were concerned were Casio and Konami who produced a number of great games, some of which you'll see in this list. Now these are all MSX1 games because I don't have an MSX2 so obviously I'm not going to play any games from that system. And they're all exclusive to the MSX at the time of release. Now my collection of MSX games is not particularly big, I've got about 30 cartridges, about half of those are exclusives, so as a result this is not a top 10 list by any means, this is just a list of 10 games that I think are interesting, they're not all great but they've all got some kind of unique or interesting factor and they are all obviously exclusive to the MSX as I've said many times already, so they're in order of preference for me, um, even though they're not a top 10 I have put them in what I think is worst to best in this list. So let's get on with the list, 10 exclusive MSX games that are worth a play. Kicking off my list in 10th place is Eagle Fighter, released by Casio in 1985. Eagle Fighter is a shoot 'em up with a 3D into the screen effect. You control a plane that has to destroy waves of enemies but before you can do that you have to get your craft in the air by speeding down the runway and taking off before you reach the end. Once airborne you must shoot the enemy craft before you run out of fuel then land your craft back on the ground to refuel for another mission. Later stages also include airborne refueling and more aggressive enemies. This is a pretty interesting idea combining the takeoff and landing of a flight simulator with a pretty straightforward gallery shooter. The takeoff and landing sequences are pretty well implemented with a decent 3D effect given the hardware and taking off in particular can be quite tricky. Once you're in the air it's fairly run of the mill shooting action and those sections are too short in comparison to the others. Graphics aren't bad with some variety in landscapes and the sounds are pretty basic though the jet noise sound is fairly convincing. It's far from an amazing game but the concept is at least quite original. Coming in at 9th place is Warroid, another game from 1985 released by ASCII Corporation. This game pits two robots against each other in a fight to the death. It's a game for two players or one player versus the computer. The objective is simply to shoot the enemy Warroid until it has no energy left. The two robots automatically target each other, so gameplay is simply a case of shooting away and trying to avoid enemy fire. There are multiple levels for the players to compete in, each having a different layout with environmental hazards and a number of collectibles that either power up or down your energy level. A configuration menu can be called up before playing by pressing the escape key which lets you customise the game settings including handicap and the colours of the player's warroids. 
Once again, this isn't a fantastic game by any means. There's not really much strategy to it other than just jumping around shooting and hoping for the best. Graphically it's quite nice though with a variety of different backdrops and the customizability aspect is good too. Playing against the computer is a war of attrition and eventually it'll just end up being destroyed but as a two player game I can imagine this being quite good fun. At number 8 is Choro Q, released by Taito in 1984. Inspired by Takora's range of cute pullback and go toy cars that originated in the late 70s, this platform game sees the player's Choro Q car trying to build two other cars on each stage. Each car must be constructed from a chassis, engine and body which must be pushed off the end of a platform in the correct order. You are pursued by hostile vehicles which can be destroyed by jumping on them which also earns bonus points. When the first car is assembled entirely it will turn into a coin that gives you temporary invulnerability when collected, allowing you to eliminate the enemy cars by running into them. Lives are lost if an enemy crashes into you, you construct a car incorrectly or fall from a platform onto it, or if you crash into the walls on either side of the play area. I really like the idea of this game which mixes action and strategy as you try and negotiate the platforms to build the cars and take out the enemies. The graphics are simple but cute and the music is catchy, but what lets it down a bit is the twitchy controls. Your car has inertia similar to that found in the original Mario Brothers, which means you can often crash into things you didn't mean to, or miss time jumps or the collection of car parts. You'll also sometimes find yourself crashing into previously unseen enemies as the screen scrolls, or hitting the walls as you delicately try and drop off the end of a platform trying to grab a power up. Despite the frustration, it's oddly addictive though, and if nothing else it's noteworthy as the first game based on the Choro Q IP, with many more games following such as Penny Racers and Road Trip Adventure on the PS1 and PS2 respectively. In 7th place we have Nemesis 2, also known as Gradius 2, released by Konami in 1987. Right now you might be saying, hang on, Nemesis 2 isn't an MSX exclusive, and you'd almost be right, as there was a sequel released in the arcades, known as Vulcan Venture in some territories. However, the MSX Nemesis 2 predates that game and has its own backstory and level design that are exclusive to this version. It is of course a side-scrolling shoot-em up and the gameplay is, for the most part, the same as the original. In this edition you fly the hyperspace fighter known as Metallion, which can have its weapons enhanced in the usual way by collecting power-ups. Extra weapons such as napalm missiles, reflex ring and back beam can also be picked up as enhancements to the core weapons. Additionally, special power-ups can be acquired with effects ranging from slowing down enemies to turning the Metallion into an invincible drill-like machine. Successfully defeating bosses allows access to mini-stages which grant the player new weapons if completed successfully. Unfortunately you're not going to see any of those unique features in this video because I'm absolutely terrible at this game. I must have played it 50 times trying to get some decent footage and only managed to get to the first end of level boss a couple of times. The graphics and especially the soundtrack are brilliant showing just how far the base MSX hardware could be pushed but it does suffer from the blocky choppy scrolling that mars many MSX games. That combined with some attribute clash means that when the action gets thick and fast it's easy to miss bullets and aliens that end up killing you, and as with all games in the series if you respawn mid level with no power ups then you may as well just give up and start again. If you're a hardcore shooter fanatic and a fan of the Gradius saga though, this is well worth checking out as a unique entry in the series. It wasn't exclusive when released in 1987, but full disclosure it was later ported to the Sharp X68000 under the name Nemesis 90 Kai in 1993 with some new levels, graphical and audio enhancements. Coming in at number 6 in this list is Butamaru Pants, also known as Pigmock. This game was released in 1983 by HAL Laboratory. 
In this arcade action game you play a pig called Butamaru who must catch dropped eggs and transfer them into pipes at each side of the screen. Each round is complete when 15 eggs have been collected. The eggs are dropped by creatures living in the clouds called pants. You have a frying pan to collect the eggs with and pushing up allows the eggs to be thrown upwards. Any enemies hit by a red egg will fall from the cloud awarding a thousand points and will eventually be replaced. Dropped eggs will stay on the floor and will periodically be cleaned up by a character that crosses the screen. Contact with this creature will cause you to lose a life, as will being hit by an egg from above. To make matters more difficult, there are mounds of dirt on the floor which can cause Butamaru to trip and become dazed temporarily, and later levels also have a mole which attacks from below the ground. Firstly, any game that includes the word pants has got to be worth checking out, and this is the kind of game idea that could only come from Japan. As befits a game from 1983, the graphics and sound are basic, but it stands out on the gameplay front, with an easy to learn but hard to master premise and a couple of possible play strategies. You can try and keep on top of the egg collection to reduce the number of times the creature runs across the bottom of the screen and get a larger end of level bonus, or you can focus on throwing the red eggs back at the pants to get the thousand point bonuses to boost your score. The mechanics take a couple of games to get used to, but then it becomes a fun, addictive game for those of us that like a high score challenge, with some deft moves possible and a fair increase in difficulty level as stages progress. In 5th place we have Aliens, or Alien 2 as it was known in Japanese. This was released by Square in 1987 and is a run and gun platformer loosely based on the final act of the classic movie. You play as Ripley and must make your way through several stages to try and rescue Newt from the Alien Queen. Armed with only a basic gun at first, you must initially deal with the facehuggers that come out of Alien Eggs. After dispatching a facehugger, the egg may be shot to reveal power-ups which include grenades, stronger guns or wing items which make Ripley jump further. After clearing the initial level on the planet's surface, Ripley enters a complex where the first boss, a giant, full-grown alien, resides. The following levels take place within the complex and you'll fight a variety of alien enemies and can choose different paths by going through doors. A rare arcade action game from the Square Back catalogue, this game has some great graphics, especially some of the large alien sprites, and there are a lot of nice touches that are consistent with the movie, such as alien eggs opening when you approach them, and the acid blood of the xenomorphs causing you additional damage. The levels are long with plenty of enemies to eliminate and the many doors on later levels give the chance for some optional exploration. The music is a bit weird at times though and the game can be quite punishing. Dying at any point sees you return to the start of the stage and jumping over the larger gaps can be quite hazardous as if you forget to keep pushing in the direction you want to jump, Ripley will stop in mid-air and plummet to her death. For that reason I found myself using the keyboard for the bigger leaps rather than the joystick. Overall, it's another game that's far from perfect, but it's a different take on the movie than the two 8-bit games released in the UK, and an interesting exclusive title for fans of the movie, or the early years of the developer that went on to specialise in RPGs. Coming in at number 4 we have Gal Force Defense of Chaos, released by Sony in 1986. This vertical scrolling shoot 'em up based on a Japanese animated series allows you to select from 7 different female characters to begin the game with. Depending on the character chosen you'll have a different ship, weapons and upgrades. The aim of the game is to rescue the other 6 characters whilst destroying enemies and facing large bosses at the end of each stage. When you pick up one of the other characters they will sometimes join alongside your ship in their own craft to give additional protection or firepower. The game takes place both in space and flying over planets with the ability to choose when to blast off into space from the surface at certain points. This is another scrolling shooter that suffers from the much maligned MSX blocky scrolling, but that's about its only flaw as it has some great graphics and a catchy tune, challenging levels with a fair difficulty curve and the fact that you can choose to play as different ships adds some replay value. There's also an element of choice involved as if you're on the ground based section you can choose whether to stay there and eventually reach the boss or blast off into space from the runways that occasionally appear and get more points and power ups before returning to the planet's surface. The end of level bosses are quite impressive too, spewing out a lot of bullets for the hardware being used here and the stacking power up system means you're rarely a victim of one hit kills. 
For the time it came out, this is fairly inventive and while it does get a bit repetitive, it's one of the best vertical shooters on the system. Into the top three then, and in third place we have Yukai Yashiki, also known as Ghost House or Monster House. This was released by Casio in 1986. This platform exploration game puts you in the role of a boy exploring a haunted house to find his missing sister. On each stage you must pick up five talismans which will reward you with a key that gives access to the stage boss. You also need to find certain items lost by your sister. The player is armed with a flashlight that serves as a weapon against the enemies which inhabit each stage, and your life meter takes the form of a set of batteries. As your life diminishes, the batteries drain and the distance that the beams can travel from your torch decreases. There are many secret areas accessible via chimneys that can be found throughout the game, one of which will transport you to a room that holds one of your sister's items. They offer different routes through each stage and even allow you to move back and forth between levels. Most of the enemies resemble demons from Japanese folklore. Here's another platform game that features a unique concept, with the torch batteries working as your health and also the power of your weapon. That can make things a little unfair as you sometimes end up underpowered and close to dying when you need the power most, but there are usually plenty of power-ups around to stock up your batteries. The graphics are varied and generally quite cute, the tunes are catchy and the free roaming exploration makes this a lot of fun, especially when you head down one of the chimneys to a previously undiscovered area. The end of stage bosses can be a bit of a pain because they all require tricks to kill them that might not be immediately obvious, which can lead to you losing lives, but aside from that niggle this game is polished and addictive. This was originally an MSX exclusive which puts it on this list, but an upgraded version for the Famicom Disk System was published in 1987 with better graphics and enhanced puzzles. At number 2 we have Penguin Adventure, released by Konami in 1986. Firstly let's talk about this title screen, which has to be the single most sorrowful title screen I've ever seen, showing the game's protagonist gazing out across the ocean, contemplating the task ahead of him. When you see this upon loading the game and accompanied by some suitably minimalist music, it could almost bring you to tears. This is the sequel to 1983's Antarctic Adventure and takes the 3D racing style gameplay of that game and adds some light RPG elements. You play the role of Penta who must save the penguin princess from a sickness that has spread across the penguin world by delivering her a golden apple. Each stage takes the form of a race to the next checkpoint, and along the way you must avoid environmental obstacles and fight or avoid enemies including bats and thunderclouds. The levels feature different landscapes such as forests, mountains, caves and water. As you progress through the levels you can catch flying fish which you can trade at shops for new equipment and weapons that will help you on your quest. Shops are accessed by falling through certain holes in the landscape while other holes give access to shortcuts that can allow the player to go on almost completely different paths. Every few stages there's a large boss that must be destroyed and the game also features mini games including a fruit machine where you can gamble your fish and another where you collect fish in outer space. This game marked the professional debut of the legendary Hideo Kojima who was assistant designer on the project and what a great game to be involved with. This is another example of Konami really pushing the limits of what the base MSX system was capable of, with the pseudo 3D scrolling really well implemented across a range of attractive environments. There's also some great music and sound effects while the gameplay has depth and variety, with lots of hidden elements to discover. It's got a nice difficulty curve, with the first couple of levels being relatively hazard free before ramping it up in the next few, and the fact you can buy various power-ups lends itself to playing the game in different ways. Overall it's a fantastic improvement on the already enjoyable Antarctic adventure and one of the best games for the MSX, exclusive or otherwise.
And finally, topping my list of MSX exclusives is King's Valley, released by Konami in 1985. In this puzzle platformer, you take control of an archaeologist exploring pyramids for jewels while trying to evade the curse of the pharaoh, which takes the form of an endless army of mummies who are constantly hunting the adventurer. These enemies follow colour-coded behavioural patterns, with the white mummies wandering aimlessly while blue ones are more targeted and red ones chase after you, running up and down the stairs faster than you can. The player can jump over enemies or throwing knives can be picked up and thrown at them, but they do respawn shortly after being killed. While some jewels can be easily collected, others are hidden behind one-way doors or in areas that require pickaxes to get to them. Each axe can only be used once, so care must be taken to use them in the correct spot to access the gems. After scavenging all the jewels, the door to the next level opens up, or sometimes two doors, one of which leads back to the previous stage. The game consists of 15 levels, some of which span two screens. You'll already have worked out that when it came to MSX exclusives, Konami really did the system proud, and Kings Valley is another fine example of that. It isn't technically impressive like Nemesis 2 and Penguin Adventure were, but for great game design and addictiveness it's hard to beat. The graphics are simple but cute, the music is catchy and the sound effects are great too, but what really makes this game special is the gameplay. Each level brings about new challenges, be it more dangerous enemies or more complicated puzzles, whilst also adding new items or environmental hazards as you progress deeper into the pyramid. The blend of action and puzzle solving is near perfect, and I genuinely believe that if this had been released on a wider range of 8-bit systems, then it would have been as highly regarded as the likes of Chucky Egg, Jet Set Willy and Monty Mole. If you've never played King's Valley, then make sure you check it out, either in its original form or on one of the homebrew conversions for the ZX Spectrum or Commodore 64 that have been released in the last decade or so. That concludes this list of 10 exclusive MSX games that are worth a look. If you're unfamiliar with the system then hopefully this has given you some ideas of what to play if you're interested in exploring it. If you have any opinions on these games or suggestions for other great MSX exclusives then please leave a comment. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos then please check out my other content and consider subscribing for weekly retro gaming videos. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.